Do you like basketball? Basketball mm -hmm. I like but I'm not good at yes. I'm not. Me too. Free episode. Who cares? Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the State of the League podcast, the only NBA podcast that is free twice a week for the off season. <laughs> oh my God, Pablo dropped his phone. Um, I'm dropping knowledge. I'm your host, Jack, aka Yoke Show Star. With me, as always, the world famous Pablo Escobar. How are you doing today, Pablo? If anybody knows any root beer brands, we'll do a sponsorship. You don't even have to pay us in money. You could pay us. No, in root beer. no, you can't pay us in root beer because I don't. I'm again. I'm fine with root beer. Like if the restaurant accidentally gives me root beer, I'll drink it. I'm. I'm not. I'm not gonna like throw a fit or anything. But there are plenty of soft drinks I would rather have. I would even go as far as to say. If there were some Gatorade flavors in front of me, I'd probably opt for those before I mm. go for a root beer. Nah, we can't do Gatorade because Michael Jordan was was Gatorade. He's a you like he's, Michael Jordan. He's the he's, he's a degenerate gambler. So you don't like LeBron and you don't like Michael Jordan. I I I'm a LeBron hater, and Jordan is mixed. Um, who are you like? Who I are like you? Jordan the player. Mm -hmm. I don't like Jordan the person, and I don't like the the media apparatus around him. I hate the people who – the journalists who rose to prominence in the 90, 90s covering Michael Jordan, and now they, they just view the entire game of basketball through a Michael Jordan story lens. And mm -hmm. uh, Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, thankfully, there's no media apparatus built around LeBron. It's really just uh, – it's only healthy, healthy talk in the media when you talk about LeBron James. So that's good. Um, I'm, I'm ready to to become a Wemby goat guy. I'm gonna go all in. Oh, dude, I'm ready to become a uh, a Wem Like if Wemby gets hurt, and that's kind of what I've emotionally prepared myself for ever since I started watching him. It's just like, oh, this can't be real. Like this, <laughs> this. <laughs> this cannot like this is uh, something that the universe has allowed to slip through the cracks, and eventually, like God's accountant will crunch the numbers and be like, "Whoa, that seven three guy is playing sixty five games a year." No, no, put a stop to that right now. And so, I'm going to enjoy it while it lasts. But Wemby Goat guy, maybe Wemby. Eh, it'd be sick. It'd be sick. I'll say that much. It just feels like a. Uh, it feels like between LeBron or between Jordan and LeBron, that whole Kobe period or Duncan or whatever you want to say, there was like a solid lull before we got to the next real great, like top two time, top three all time player. And so if Wemby's that, it'd be cool, but uh, I just don't know. It's actually crazy that Shaq's not thrown in there more consistently and confidently. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that is. I don't know. I wonder, I feel like coming off of Jordan probably hurt him a lot because he wasn't winning until, what, year like seven? And I mean, Jordan really didn't even do that either. But just the, this idea that like Shaq, I don't know, was literally giving the best player on the planet 30 and 10 on 60% shooting uh, and... And the NBA media is like, well, this doesn't count. He didn't fucking win. It's just like the entire first half of his career up until that three-peat, it just feels almost invalid because it's right after Jordan and he's not winning. And then, yeah, he had the three-peat. And I don't know, it feels, feels weird how he's talked about. Because, like, it, yeah, it is strange how unanimous – one of the greatest peaks of all time. Like when people talk about absolute apex players, uh, Shaq is nobody really forgets to leave him off those lists. And then super underrated longevity. Like he was making a, a much less like all NBA first team, best player on the planet type runs. He was making all NBA teams until he's like 36. And so prior to, prior to the LeBron, Kevin Durant, Steph type of longevity with like, we've been maintaining our bodies since we were 12 years old to try and play basketball as long as possible. 
his longevity was really, really impressive. And it still is, I don't know, looking back. So it is strange. I guess some of the off-court stuff, some of the work ethic stuff that kind of clouds his career, and then the whole like him butting heads with Kobe, I guess that fucks up it for some people. I just don't Kobe's know. Kobe's got more fans. That's true. That's unequivocally true, yeah. Rest in oh. peace, Shaq's goat case. It never in- got off the ground. It died when Jerry West made that trade with Charlotte. He was the real omission from the dream team. It should have been him, not Christian Leitner. That would have been sick. Damn. That would have been I mean, you put Shaq on the dream team, yeah. I'm definitely You'd be taking the best him center over. on there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sure, Patrick Ewing is falling off the bone at that point. <laughs> he uh, might be the best player on there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all right, all right. We have we have a nice array of off season topics to talk about. Do you want to start with Paul George, or do you want to we, start? With- we got to start with Paul George. He's been called the domino waiting to fall. Yeah, uh, everything will fall into place once Paul George is his fate is decided. And so, what are the other say- dominoes then? I'm thinking about because it's like what a primarily like three and D wing domino effect. KCP. <laughs> Yeah, I thought KCP's there, and then is it – so if Paul George is at the top. Is number two KCP or Jeremy Grant? Oh, I don't I don't know. Is something guaranteed to happen with Jeremy Grant? I don't know. No, it's it's not a lock. Um, it just feels like he's in that, that archetype a little bit. And then I feel like the bottom domino, which is still a really good domino, Najee Marshall uh, in New Orleans. Oh, yes. He's really good. He's a free agent as He's well. He's better than Josh Giddy. I mean, absolutely would have been better in a trade too. Uh, fuck, what was I just about to say? Yeah, I think uh, he will probably be what some teams consider like settling for in this market. I think people, especially like casual fans, recognize name like KCP or Paul George a little bit more. But Najee Marshall, he'll be really good for whoever picks him up. Chris Paul's a domino. LeBron is a domino. Um, Clay Thompson is a domino. So there's a lot, a lot of, a lot of pieces in motion here. But I gotta say, as as a guy who's Paul George pilled, I did, I did not a great summer for Paul George's image. Why? Why do you feel that way? Because. I don't know, just the recent complaints that he had about the trade, um, about the hard move, about doing the dirty work, and then uh, he hasn't played that well, and then now he, um, Kawhi Leonard took a three-year deal, and Mm -hmm. he, like, took a sacrifice to keep this team uh, competitive, I guess. Um, Well, I don't know if he's sacrificed any money, but he took three years, uh, and I don't. Why can't Paul George do the same? <laughs> I I I don't know. I just I it's just not a great online time for Paul George fans. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't really been locked into, I guess, the imagery of Paul George online because I'm not Paul George pilled for most of these teams that we can run through. I feel like he would be a good pickup for them, but like. I also feel like they could hit a similar ceiling if they spend whatever it is, like $50 million a year, if they focus that capital on like depth and role players a little bit more. I think most of them have already displayed either enough high-end talent to get where they want to go or get as close as Paul George is going to bring you. Or alternatively, other teams that are in the mix, I'm like, you should not be in the mix for Paul George at all. Like it just doesn't <laughs> you're not at the 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 crossroads in your rebuild or whatever you want to call it to really be in the market to pay a 34 year old two hundred million dollars. Um yeah. So he well you 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 heard his comments about the Harden trade, right? The, no, refresh work. me, refresh me. Um, he said that uh, while getting James Harden was great and James did a lot for the team, he was really good. He was disappointed that they let Batum and Covington go because they did a lot of the dirty work for the team. <laughs> and and without them on the team, he and Kawhi and everyone else had to pick that up like more. And uh, also he said like 
Russ Russ was finally finding his way with the team, but then he had to readjust and learn how to mm-hmm. whatever. Which which is the signal to me. I think Paul George thinks Russell Westbrook is better than James Harden and should have been point guard. Um, but oh my god, yeah. So so Paul George said he didn't. He basically said I don't want to want to do the dirty work. And so then people are rightfully saying, what does Paul George want to do? Because he complained when they didn't have a point guard. He's like, oh, man, we really need a point guard. We really need someone to get us uh, into our sets and stuff like that. Like mm-hmm. I could. I, and it's funny. He always says the same thing, and which is true. He's like, I could do it, but it would be nice to have someone else do it because he can literally do everything on the court. And so when it comes to the dirty work, he says, I could do it, but man, I'd like someone else to be sick. Yeah. When it comes to playing point guard, he's like, well, I could do it, but man, it'd be nice not to be hounded by Drew Holiday and uh, not to have so much ball handling responsibility. Um when he complained about Doc Rivers, he said he misused him and he said he was using him off ball too much and like running him off pin downs and stuff. He said he's using me like JJ Redick or Ray Allen. So he so he doesn't want to play off ball either too mm-hmm. much. So it seems like he wants to cook. That's what he wants. Well, he it seems like he just wants to not do that much. He he'll he'll do everything. But he doesn't want to do that much of it. He wants an easy, easy load on both ends. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, okay. So all of those comments, those aren't great. Uh, and I, I feel like, yeah, I guess that it doesn't necessarily rule out any of the teams that are speculating to be interested in him. But he'll have is... to do one of the one of those things. Yeah, for yeah. The like he'll have to play defense or handle the ball or be off the ball on offense. There's there's going to be some combination of that, Paul. Get ready. Yeah. Well, pretty much all of, yeah. You can't, <laughs> some of that, <laughs> everybody is going to ask him to play defense, first and foremost. <laughs> um, like, that is the impression that everyone, they're like, oh, this is one of the, he, he could still make all defensive teams and everything. And when he's <laughs> locked in, he is good defensively. Guy um, who's one of the best defenders in the league when asked to play defense. Man, uh, <laughs> after getting paid a max contract, literally like transcendental six nine ball handler, just in terms <laughs> of like on ball creation and fluidity and stuff. And he's just like, "What? You want me to dribble up the court and like tell people where to go? Hey, this is rid- <laughs> Fuck, dude, this is ridiculous, you guys. Oh my god. So, all right. Um, I guess we could start with the Clippers. What do you want to talk about in terms of like? Do we want to talk about like how how he fits with all the teams that are speculating around him? Which ones you would like most like to see him go to? How do you think we break this down? So so let's start with the Clippers can offer Paul George four years, two hundred twenty one million. Let me let me get on my calculator. Which, how much is that? Is that here? is that slightly more than everyone else? So that'd be that'd be fifty five mil. I think. Harden is going to be making like 48 mil. Okay. And then, um, cause I believe they have his bird rights. Right. So I think, I think he is going, they are going to resign him, but they have to wait for Paul George, I mm-hmm. think. And then let's see, Kawhi is 152 over three years. So Kawhi is 50 mil. What did I say for Paul George? 55 for Paul George. 55. Yeah. So he wants more, Jesus. he wants more than Kawhi, but, he already said he's the Robin. He admitted he's the Robin. So Kawhi's Batman. <laughs> but Robin, pay me like Batman. Pay me. Robin like doesn't that. get paid more than Wayne Industries. <laughs> um, but yeah, the the Paul George wants a four year deal, which is mm-hmm. a big problem. Uh, he is looking at other destinations right now to go there straight up in free agency, but now. The reports I I've seen the momentum has shifted towards him um, signing with the Clippers and then and then getting traded. A sign and uh, trade situation. Yeah, he okay. has until Saturday to opt into a forty eight point eight million dollar contract for next season, or become an unrestricted free agent. So we could we could get a sign and trade, and uh, yeah. the Warriors are the big. I think that's the most interesting sign and trade destination. Have you heard about that? Um, I mean, I've heard. Um, okay, so 
I ran through a list of teams, but I haven't really like ran through what they would need to give up in a sign and trade or anything. This is just more so most of mine were like straight up if he walks in free agency. And then I also have uh the Knicks are the only one that I wrote down and sign and trade for, and that'd be with Julius Randle. So what are mm-hmm. what are the Warriors giving up in a sign and trade? So the Warriors are hard capped if you're above the first apron, blah, blah, blah. So Clay can't be involved in the sign and trade for Paul George. It would have to be Chris Paul, Kavon Looney, and Gary Payton for Paul George or Chris Paul and Andrew Wiggins for Paul George, plus two lower salary players from the Clippers, I guess, like Bones Highland and Amir Coffey. So Mm -hmm. um, Chris Paul is pretty much involved either way. Um, I can't imagine the Clippers would be interested in getting Kavon Looney that much. So (laughs) probably they'd probably rather roll with Wiggins. And surprisingly, the Warriors have all their picks except for like 2031 or something like that. They they have all their picks for the next couple of years. So I don't know how many it would take to get Paul George, but they could theoretically throw him in there. And benefits think, of uh, signing the best player or the second best <laughs> player on the planet for nothing and just extending your title <laughs> windows. Like, oh, we still have all these picks. How did this happen? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what's it called? There, Bill Simmons was also on his podcast. He was talking about, like, there's some option involving Kuminga, which which I could see. Obviously, the Clippers that would be their best possible yeah. return. I would uh, assume the Warriors want to avoid that if possible. Yeah. Um. And so, how how would you feel about the Warriors if they were, let's just say they do the Chris and and also underrated part of the like, is there any chance Chris Paul could go to the Clippers where he would be James Harden's teammate again? Um. Did they have like a big falling out? Okay, so did yeah, Har- they they hated each other. By okay, the end of it. damn, I don't remember that. Uh, well, then I guess if he gets traded there, do they just have like a stalemate on their hands where like somebody's refusing to play? You think? I don't know. Well, I think it was more James Harden hated Chris Paul, okay. <laughs> so. Um, there's a chance he could have gotten over that, um, but I don't know. Um, I, yeah, it it would just be a crazy fit. I do think they'd probably like. I think Chris Paul's still better than Westbrook. Mm-hmm. And, um, I agree. Westbrook, like if that, I forget what the situation is with Westbrook. I think he's probably out of there, or yeah, I don't know if he's under contract right now. Um, but God, I fucking hate the off season, man. There's so many <laughs> moving parts. I'm actually a fucking idiot. I don't know how anybody keeps track of all this shit. But yeah, I think Chris Paul is better than Westbrook. Um, assuming that Harden has healed emotionally from whatever was going on in Houston and has grown as a person. Um, I think so. For the Warriors. Is Clay is Clay walking at that point? Are they letting him walk, or is this? Are we running? What is that? Steph, Clay, Kaminga, Paul, George, Draymond lineups, or what? I I don't know if if signing if this like takes Clay out of the equation entirely. Because like um, just plug Paul George in for Clay at this point. I do think they become a better basketball team. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Clay. I know we just talked about Paul George not wanting to do whatever. Um, I think Steph takes a ton of the burden off of Paul George just in terms of like, I think he'd be a lot more comfortable doing all that shit if three of the defenders on the floor are focused on somebody else all the time, even if he Mm -hmm. has the ball in his hands. Uh, And so I think that's something Paul George is way better at dribbling and getting to the rim and all that shit than Clay is. He's a way better defender at this point and a much better facilitator. So I think the ball movement with him, Draymond, and uh, Steph on the floor could be cool. Yeah, I, I like it for the Warriors. I think they get better. I don't necessarily think they're like heavy conference finals favorites in the West next year. I think they'd be good, and I think they'd be a tough series for whoever they see. But I do think – Age is going to be tough for all of those guys, besides Pajemski and Kaminga, obviously. 
Yeah, it'd be it'd be crazy because that seems like an incredibly talented lineup. That seems like it should be one of the top teams in the league. But yeah, the West is so good that mm-hmm. you know what? Actually, I do think they would be in the top tier. I if they run into Jokic, I don't know if they could overcome that. But could they beat the Thunder? Yeah, I like. I just I, I, I still feel like. Peak Steph Curry can go can go with anybody. Like peak mm-hmm. Steph Curry can match peak SGA. He could be the best player in a series, at least offensively. Yeah, and then I guess it would depend on Draymond. What what Draymond are we getting next year? Is he if he's still elite defensively, and if he's not a basketball terrorist? <laughs> um, I don't know. I just I feel like there's so much potential for like a Paul George bad game and overlap with the Draymond disaster class that it's uh, playoff wise, a pretty volatile lineup, especially considering what did Kaminga look like? So they didn't make the postseason this year. Has Kaminga ever played in the playoffs? Like serious minutes? Um, I mean, well, he just, I feel like he straight up wasn't good until this year. So I don't know what he did. Yeah. When was their last playoff series? Was it, it the Nuggets? No, no, that was they. I think when they lost to uh, the Lakers last, so last last year, that so was they their last lost playoff to the series. Lakers, and the Lakers lost to the Nuggets. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know what he did in that series, but I he mean, wasn't. He he really bloomed this year. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree with that. It's just uh, I don't know. I I feel like. I feel like it's a volatile team for whatever reason. And so I, I agree with you that I think Steph can still really go. I don't think you're going to get that much offensive help from Draymond. Uh, I do think Paul George, if they run into a great defense, like I think if they ran into the Thunder again, for example, I think they have a lot of guys to throw at somebody like Paul George. Yeah, but I I think – they the Steph factor makes everything easier. Like it would be, it would probably be the easiest shots of Paul George's life because like even when he's mm. playing off of Kawhi and off of Harden, like I don't. It's different. Yeah, it's 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 getting layups. It's not getting jumpers, yeah. which is crazy. And then I I think maybe Kuminga could take could continue taking another step forward. Who knows how good he mm. is next year. Pajemski another year, Trace Jackson Davis another year. So they'd definitely be pretty good. I don't know if they'd be. Hey, that's they could be a great defense though too. That's that's mm-hmm. what's cr- like if you do get like really high level Paul George next to Draymond and Pajemski and everybody. Like, yeah, that's that's almost like a revamp of a uh, 2022 a little bit where you pick up Wiggins and you're just like, hey, be athletic and get into passing lanes and shit and. uh yeah, I don't know. Uh, Paul George, obviously, he'll he'll be like thirty five next year. I'm pretty sure, but still, he's he's a high level defender when he wants to be. Um, so yeah, I like it for the Warriors. I would give the Warriors in terms of fit, probably, I'll give that like a nine out of ten. I, I like that for them. Yeah, I, th- I think if they're able to make it work, that that's a great spot for both parties. Mm-hmm. Um, Philadelphia. The the reports go back and forth. They're like they're super interested. Then they're like, oh, they're not that into it anymore. But then people are like, they're lying. They're actually still into it. So <laughs> I don't. I would imagine they're still yeah. locked into him because who else are they going to be into? The other dominoes, probably. Uh, the the, the not... KCP domino. God damn it! If KCP if he goes to Philly, I'll be upset with him. I'll be mad. Oh, um... what if they max out? Patrick Williams and uh, KCP instead. Maybe. Who's to say? Who's to say? Um, so for the Sixers, I guess at that point, you're probably just plugging Paul George into Tobias Harris's spot and being like, let's run this, this version. Uh, and I think that's a way better basketball team. Uh, in term, I think that maybe if you get like, Obviously, healthy and beat is like a stupid qualifier that doesn't really exist. But if he doesn't get fucking Bell's palsy and shit, <laughs> and we just like we just get the version of him that we saw in the Knicks series, I think I think that's a team that could beat any team in the league. I don't know. What do you think? 
Yeah, I think he's at such a high level that he's so OP that all he needs is capable shooters, shooters and defenders around him. Um, and so hopefully it fluctuates with Paul George, but uh, <laughs> hopefully he can, he can be that. And yeah. uh, he wouldn't, and Maxi is like super duper high level secondary player in terms of like playing off of Embiid. So yeah. maybe that could cast Paul George into the third banana role, but I don't, I don't know whether, he would think that way or if he or if he'd be like i'm number two man i gotta handle the ball so much i don't know (laughs) i don't know i feel like i think i think they have such an established two-man game between Embiid and maxi that paul george could slot in as a third option and like where we're talking about like it's generating layups with steph it'd be kind of similar He'd like I think it'd just generate constant fucking hard closeouts. Like he would be able to blow by guys no problem. And at that point, the defense is already kind of in rotation, so it's up to him uh, to figure out what to do. But I feel I feel like uh, they'd be able to generate possessions like that for him pretty routinely, even if his I don't know shot volume or whatever goes down. Because I think Maxi does deserve. I don't know, 17, 18 shots a game, uh, and they're probably more effective when he's playing that way. Uh, If you're getting $50 million a year, you should be cool being the third fucking banana. Figure it out, man. If Tobias Harris could do it, you could do it. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, Philly, I give them them an 8 out of 10 in terms of fit. I, I like it. I think the Warriors probably like a little bit better, even though I think just the ceiling of the Sixers, I like it more. But the fit, the fit with the Warriors slotting him in for Clay is a little more natural. How? And then if it is the Knicks, if it is the Julius Randle trade of prophecy, how do you feel about the Knicks? Do you think they're a legit contender? Um, yeah, I I think so. Um, but he would have to do everything we already talked about, like all of the shit. That he said he's like the dirty work or whatever. Tom Thibodeau would <laughs> kill him, like on camera, if he heard him say that stuff. And so, yeah, you're gonna have to, you'll have to defend, you'll have to hustle, you have to put your body on the line and shit. Um, but in terms of like a healthy roster making a run, them beating the Celtics would be really tough. Uh, and similar to the Thunder, I, I mean, more so than the Thunder, really, if we're talking just next season. Uh, the Celtics have a lot of guys to throw at Paul George. That would be a tough, tough series for him. Um, and Brunson, they kind of play similar styles uh, in terms of like herky jerky. They both like mid range shots. They both like uh, not. And Paul George doesn't like it in the paint as much as uh, Brunson does. But it's he's not like a stranger to those looks. Uh, I think. I think they are probably a tier below the Warriors and the Sixers for me with Paul George, but I still think I could see a world where they they make a run and shit lines up well for them. Who would you? Who do you think? Who would you rather have guaranteed health? Because because Paul George health is not guaranteed either. Yeah, yeah. Um, Paul, him or OG? Um. Oh man, fuck. I think. So this is like Paul George is on the Knicks and I'm guaranteeing his health. Yeah. I think I'd rather ha- I'd rather have Paul George. I'm just going to go with like the higher end talent situation um and just like stick by that decision cuz I think that raises the ceiling of your team, but I don't I think they would both need to be healthy for New York to like really really make noise. I think if you're missing OG and Anobi, uh, they don't well, have I th- I think it's either or. I think um because he's, he's looking for like, he's looking for like thirty five million dollars. That's that's the the report. Um, yeah, and and I don't know if they could have them both. I think, and it sounds like that he might leave. It's it's oh, weird. I, if I was them, well, I guess they're looking at Paul George. But yeah, like the guy you traded for him, he was like the highest plus minus guy after being traded ever. Mm-hmm. Like he's a plus twenty in every single game. It's it's interesting because defensively i think he's better than paul george at this point unquestionably but I feel uh, that way. the the offense he wants to cook more but they they didn't really let him cook more and 
you got to wonder how, what, what is, what's the formula for this team to win? Is it Jalen Brunson, Iverson on offense, and that everyone else is just playing hardcore balls to the walls defense? Or is there some kind of mix that you can get in there, like more Brunson scoring and then more Paul George slash OG scoring? I don't, I don't know. Okay, so when you posed that question to me, I was just, I, I was just imagining both of them on the roster. Who would I rather have healthy? But in terms of like the core and the framework the Knicks have established, I think OG is probably better suited for that. Um, and I think maybe maybe there is a way that they like find the balance to mix in other shit with uh, Brunson's Iverson esque offensive load, but. I don't think it's Paul George, and I think uh, just, I mean, even ignoring the health stuff, which uh, they can barely afford to take on another health risk with the way their season ended this year and the way their season largely went. Um, But I also, yeah, I just think Paul George, he's great, but like I said, I'm not as Paul George-pilled as you are, and I don't think he raises the offensive ceiling enough to compromise the Knicks' identity the way that losing OG and Anobi would. And it would be 20, OG's 20 million less, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Holy shit. That's crazy. Yeah, I didn't, <laughs> I hadn't really done the math in my head, but yeah, it definitely doesn't feel like there's $20 million worth of difference between those two guys to me, even though, again, Paul George is better. Yeah. It's, yeah, so I if I'm them, I probably would keep OG as well. Um, so there's yeah, there's I'm, been some Rockets rumors. I don't know who they would give up. Uh, I don't know either. Game? I think so. The rumor that I saw, and this is dipping into um, the other free agent rumors, I guess, is that the Rockets are in win now mode, quote unquote, and so. That that quote was connected to them possibly making a move for Jimmy Butler or Kevin Durant. Um, and then there was a separate report that they are looking into Paul George as well. And they're like, I don't know, big game hunting or whatever the phrase was. But yeah, I just this this is the one where I'm like, I don't think they're ready at all for to, I mean, I don't think they're a 34-year-old, 35-year-old small forward away <laughs> from, like, really making noise in the Western Conference. And it's cool. It's cool. It's totally fine to bring in uh, Dylan Brooks and Fred Van Vliet and be like, we don't have a, an established culture here. You guys are coming from winning franchises, and you can, like, show us how to establish good habits, shit like that, and, like, really help our young core. Uh, one overachieving 10 seed – is not like is not the time to like push all your chips into the center of the table and be like we will pay Paul George fifty five <laughs> million dollars absolutely uh, so yeah I don't like this for them at all and I don't really yeah I don't know who they would move they probably move one of Brooks or Van Vliet and some other shit just in terms of money now that I'm thinking it and with them they're so wing heavy that his minutes will cost somebody. So Mm -hmm. I don't know who, if it's Jabari Smith or Cam Whitmore or Amen Thompson or Tari Eason, but either way, I feel like they've done such a good job at drafting that this is not really the swing to take. I feel like the swing would be a special center, like a a stretch five who can protect the rim as well, and not that that's available. But, yeah, or or just pick one of those of like, up off the street. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, or some kind of high level lead guard, which which all indications are they are going to take lead Shep or Reed Shepherd. So we'll oh, see little Freudian slip, lead Shepherd because he's <gasps> so, he's such a leader, man. <laughs> but yeah, so they, yeah, I, I don't think it would be a disaster if they did get any of those guys, but I don't really see them winning a championship in that lifetime. Unless Shengun does go just full on Jokic. Yeah. Um, and even then, even if he does, uh, if he doesn't like within the next two years, then you're like, oh, he's full on Jokic. And we have 37 year old Paul George as like his counterpart. 
that's that's his co-star and everything. I just think. Uh, well, the rest of the guys will grow up. So yeah, Paul whatever. Like the oh best player. <laughs> um, yeah, I just think like sacrificing a Men Thompson sophomore year minutes for thirty-four-year-old Paul George. Like he's good. I don't. Yeah, this is not the move. I'm hesitant on the Magic making this move. And so, and they're like way closer to being like really, really good than the Rockets are to me. And even then, I'm like, no, that's you guys are young. Don't like it's cool. It's cool to like become a serious team and like get a seat at the table and everything. But simultaneously, I don't think just like sacrificing everything that you've built to get yourself that opportunity, especially when you're not ready for it. Uh, I don't think that's the move. So I would give the Rockets like a four out of 10. I don't like it. Nasty business. <laughs> yeah. I, th- I think that's all the Paul George destinations, right? Um, I also had magic heat and Mavericks written down just as, like, I was literally scrolling through fucking NBA Central and every team I saw, it was like, oh, interested in Paul George. I just wrote him down. Uh, I don't see like a super realistic path forward. I know the Magic have money, um, and so if he opts out and is just like a straight free agent, I think they could be involved in that discussion. And then simultaneously, if the, if the whole Jimmy Butler is getting traded end of discussion report ends up having some some merit behind it then the idea of like Jimmy Butler for Paul George that seems like something the Heat would be open to just because they've been so stubborn on like getting a real all-star they don't want Mm -hmm. like draft picks or young assets back for Jimmy maybe that that could be a path forward but yeah I think uh Sixers Knicks Clippers and Warriors are like the big four that I would really keep an eye on for what what's going to happen with Paul George. Yeah, the the problem with Miami is that Pat Riley made a big show of saying, I need available players. The best ability is availability. I hate <laughs> people who miss games and get injured. And Paul George misses as many games as anybody. So yeah. it would be, it'd be, it'd be a tough sell uh, to him. Um but yeah, the I think one of the next, not the next best free agent, but the next most prominent free agent would probably be Clay Thompson. And so Clay Thompson's been linked a lot of different places. Uh, one of them has been the Magic. People mm-hmm. look at the Magic and they say they have no one who can make a three pointer. Clay Thompson can make a lot of three pointers. That'd be a good fit. But apparently, there has been no traction between Clay and the Magic. Clay's best offers may end up smaller in money and shorter in years, even if the and him and the Warriors aren't talking at all right now. Yeah. So he deleted all his Instagram pictures. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, well, we don't know if he deleted or privated. I bet. He oh, privated. OK. Um, but yeah, even if the Warriors eventually approach him with a competitive offer, um, it apparently has become increasingly conceivable that Clay will decide to leave regardless just Ew. because he wants a fresh start. Um, yeah, so he, he doesn't have an offer from Golden State right now. Um, there's no one-year, two-year, three-year. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there's been no productive discussions between them. And they say we'll bring you back in the right <laughs> for the right price and the right role, but they're, they're not in a rush to get it done. And so I, I guess they are kind of – it's part of their plan where they're like – you know what? Maybe his market's not that strong. We'll just hold out and and yeah. wait for him. I mean, yeah. There's just a like even if you're even if you're the second greatest shooter of all time, if if your only skill is shooting threes, like you can't dribble, you can't get to the basket, you're not a good defender, you are a negative passer a lot of the times. Like your only skill is finishing plays on three point attempts. It, that's just not like it's cool. It's sick. It's an instrumental thing to NBA offenses. Don't get me wrong. But that is as like your individual only thing you're contributing on the court. Most possessions, that's not going to get you an insane amount of money uh, or like an insanely long contract either. Like that's something that the second you stop doing that at a high level, 
you can't play. Like that's that's your contribution is cut. And so you can still be like a cool locker room guy. You could be part <laughs> of the core three and everything. Like we drafted you, we won all these championships with you. But yeah, it's just uh it doesn't really instill confidence. And um so it's the Warriors, the magic is who who else is even reportedly interested in, in him? I don't know. I don't know if there's it se- it seems like there hasn't been anything, really. Because, like, all of anybody who's interested in Clay Thompson right now, and they were like, oh, KCP is available. Case, like, Kendavious Caldwell Pope straight up might walk. Everyone who has a spot for Clay Thompson would be better with Kentavious Caldwell Pope filling that role, I feel like. Yeah, he, there's been KCP to Orlando rumors. So, I mean, I'm. I'm surprised there have like we don't even hear Clay Thompson to Detroit, and that seems like that would be a, a thing because Detroit's like worse at shooting than Orlando, yeah. and they and they have like no veterans, so it seems like it would be a slam dunk. We're, we have complete cap space with like no veterans. Let's get in championship winning guy who can make threes. Like that seems like that should be a natural thing, but I don't even hear hear about that. Yeah, it's just uh. Yeah, I mean, I, I, beyond that, I really have no idea. Like, it's, the, the fact that the market is not good doesn't really surprise me that much. I didn't think he was that good for them this season. And if he had not built up this much of a rapport with one franchise, uh, I think he would be move. He would have been moving around pretty rapidly over these past several years. Like, he'd be a guy where teams give him a year or two years and they're like, Hey, it's clay Thompson. He could really shoot. He could help us out. He's like a good defender, all this stuff. And like, it's just that repeated experience of like it not working out, but it, we haven't seen that because the warriors obviously rely on, like they fuck with him so much that they're holding on to him. Um, and he was good off the bench when he was playing off the bench. Yeah. I remember what did he, he had like 36, after that whole like media debacle where he was like, I don't want to come off the bench. I don't want to come off the bench. And then he did. Um, So, I mean, if they, it's just harder even to imagine that, I guess, like to go from where they are at relationship wise right now, we're not even discussing a contract. It seems written in stone that he's going to leave to in like four or five months being like no he's cool coming off the bench like he's he's okay with that it just doesn't feel like maybe he has a come to jesus or whatever moment internally but which he might because he's a he's a very interesting self-aware guy like he, mm-hmm. it seems it seems he always comes around in terms of like that kind of stuff like there were originally he was like no way i'm coming off the bench and then he like kind of accepted it and like yeah I, I still love the Devin Booker thing where he was like four rings or whatever. And then he went on Paul George's podcast. He's like, yeah, I just had my feelings hurt. And I should, I shouldn't have been doing that. And he's yeah. one of our best young players, blah, blah, blah. So I like clay. Um, it might just take a little while for him to adjust. And, and I'm sure it just feels bad going from one of the best players in the NBA and one of the most important players to your, to your franchise ever. Mm-hmm. going to a reduced role and reduced money but yeah yeah that's that's just how these dynasties go yeah and there was a, there was a bunch of sound bites about that as well this season where he was just they, they were like how do you feel and he's like it feels bad it doesn't feel good <laughs> I, i'm clay i'm still clay thompson but it's just i'm not clay thompson anymore and so uh yeah i don't know uh it's an interesting look into the human aspect of these guys definitely uh they're not just numbers on a piece of paper they're not just robots playing a game like these are people and so every so often you get a situation like this where uh the human aspect the unpredictable aspect of it all is something that could largely define the outcome because like if they if they if they could move chris paul for paul george and if you could pay Clay Thompson like the seventh best player on your team, which I mean, I don't think that's going to happen realistically, but if they could, that's a great team. That's a really, really good team. How much is he asking for? Do you know? Cause I don't know. Uh, here, if you, if you yap, I can Google it. 
Because, like, if he gets Malik Monk money, like $19 million a year, I feel like that's really not that bad. So yeah. I, I don't know what he's asking for. But but $19 million for a guy who is still a really high-level shooter and still has familiarity with the system, still has crazy chemistry with Draymond Green and Steph Curry and, and can be a, a, a presumably good locker room guy. Uh, just teaching the young guys. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think that could still be a, at nineteen million. I, w- I would like it. How but, much is Clay asking for? I'm so bad at googling shit. <laughs> Did you hear that uh, the Google AI people are saying like every time you search it, it takes up a certain amount of electricity? So we're we're killing the planet now by using perfect. AI. Sweet. This rocks. Cause I definitely asked for that from Google. It was so hard to like, that's, that was the big thing with Google is when you would ask for something, you could never find the information. I was like, if only I had a robot to bring other useless information that does not pertain to my search to the top of the screen, that would be sick as fuck. Um, it looks... If only I had someone who could make up information for me. <laughs> if only I could Google like uh, how much, how many ounces are in a cup, and then just have something completely fucking separate from that, just like thrown at my face as you get top three display. million ounces because someone <laughs> made a joke on Reddit one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it looks like uh, Thompson is looking for about twenty-eight million dollars a year. Yeah, see, that's too high. What would be the magic number? I feel like maybe like 22 is like yeah. the highest I'd go. Yeah, 22. 22 would be chill. 19. It's insane that they got Malik Monk for 19. I'm not going to lie. Like, he could have gotten a lot more money than that. So, Kings fans, uh, I know we've got some in the lobbyist request down there a ways. You should just count your fucking lucky stars, okay? Don't, don't get too greedy about other potential players coming to Sacramento. You'll take you'll take Zach Levine and you'll like it, okay? And do not respect Aaron Schroeder. No, don't respect him. Um, that that insult's brought to you by my by the Bullmobile turning on. Yay! All right, um, Clay Thompson. I did. Ta- I I sleek. I cheeky time stamped Clay Whoa! Thompson. Oh yeah, I didn't even need to say anything about it. Um, so we could do what is it now? Forty six. We could run through. Just like other rumors, I guess. I have a, I have a pretty one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have nine written down here, but some of them are fucking stupid, so it doesn't matter. And we already ran through the Rockets one. So I guess the one I wanted to bring up to you as a like a follow-up move to the Alex Caruso trade is that the Bulls are on the radar as a landing spot for Contavious Caldwell Pope. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just thought that would, if I have to lose KCP, that would be the funniest possible way to do it. I thought you would be pissed because, because you always talk about how it should be illegal for good great (laughs) role players to be on bad teams. Like what a disaster that would be. And uh, apparently the scenario where we go after KCP is where we lose out on Patrick Williams. Um, And so, they said that – remember OKC was apparently interested in Patrick Williams? Uh-huh. This, there was going to be a sign and trade on the table there where we would have gotten giddy for Patrick Williams, I guess. Damn. But, uh, but we would you have rather that and yeah. then you got, you got to trade Caruso for something else? Honestly, I'd be super-duper pissed either way because right, <laughs> right now – all the dumbest Bulls fans you've ever met in the world, they're saying this trade is okay because Josh Kitty's young. He's young and he's durable. And I, actually, I guess I guess if they did the Patrick Williams Giddy trade, they would just say, "Well, Patrick Williams is hurt all the time, so it's good we got Josh Giddy." They guys, I don't care if someone's healthy if they're not good. Ish Smith is probably healthier than Joel Embiid. I don't want him. I don't want him. Get him out of here. Um, yeah, the. I no. If we lose, I don't. I can't fathom a situation where it would make sense losing Patrick Williams. What? Why wouldn't they pay him? <laughs> why would we? Why would <laughs> you got to pay Giddy? We have to pay Giddy next year. You got to pay oh Giddy a calm, calm forty mil next year. Nothing, nothing too crazy. He's not getting Paul George money, but you got to retain him. Let's call it 
six years, forty million dollars. And you know the cap is going up eventually. So that'll so, be a steal. Oh my god. So that'll be a steal. The worst case scenario, who was an all-star this year? There's no way Giddy, let's say he puts up an empty 19 19 8 and 9 or 8 and t- what? 19 10 and 8. Okay. And could 10 he rebounds. The could he make the all-star team? I know, um, right? <laughs> I hope not. If he, he makes could. the all-star team, I'm done for. He could, he could, because um, if you think about who were replacements this year, yeah, oh, dude, he could be like an injury replacement all star. Like if if somebody goes down, one of the forwards, uh, yeah, that's crazy. Because I don't, th- he's obviously not going to be better than fucking Scotty Barnes or Paolo Bancaro next season. But, like, he could put up the line that those guys were putting up. <laughs> and uh, if the Bulls are even, like, eight games under 500, because the Raptors weren't good this year either. And so, like, uh, and Scotty got in. I feel like, yeah. Um, yeah. Josh Giddy, All Star. I think it won't happen. It can't happen. The league would step in, they would just pick somebody else, I feel like. But, well, no, they have a nice, nice white star. A nice comeback story. Um, yeah. So I just thought it'd be funny if KCP, like, you blow, you make the blow it up move, and then you like poise, like you're blowing up the rest of it. Like Levine, the market, we're looking around DeRozan, and they'd even part with Vucevic. Oh my God, the crown jewel of their of their fucking moment. But uh, if it was all just fake, and they're like, no, we just traded Caruso, and now. We're revamping for another play and push with KCP, baby. I love trading for a guy who's not good and who has shown that he literally cannot play off the ball. So you need to play him on the ball. So the entire roster of construction now becomes how can we maximize this bad player that we've invested in? We <laughs> need right. more shooters so we can make life easier on this bad player who still won't be good even if there were shooters around him. Yeah, um, I'm looking forward to it. It will be fun next year. I'm sorry. Oh, God, that's so terrible. I'm sorry that happened to you, but it is really funny. Um, Next up, the Mavericks have checked in on Jeremy Grant with Portland and are actively trying to trade Tim Hardaway. Those Wait, are the so- magic. No, the Mavericks. Oh, <laughs> like, what a <laughs> weird thing. <laughs> no, no, the Mavs. Um, Jeremy Grant's making a ton of money. I think Tim Hardaway's making too much money. I don't think what they is would... Jeremy Grant make? Is it twenty eight a year? It's more, I think. Let me let me look. Let me look. I Shut thought it was Jeremy like... Grant. He's at Fashion Week right now. He's a hey, fashionable he's a, guy. He's a handsome guy. Him and uh him and Kyle Kuzma are the two. They're always like intertwined in my mind. It's like they're good. That's too much money though. Um but they're <laughs> but they're good. <laughs> Yeah, and so Jeremy Grant, uh, it's not loading. This is so sad. I guess <gasps> I'll never know how much money he makes. Uh, 29, $29.7 million for 24-25 next season. And that goes up. So 32 the year after that, $34 million the year after that. And then he has a player option in 2028 for $36 million. And how old will he be then? 33. He'll turn that down. Yeah, yeah. He'll and the Mavs will have to repay him. So otherwise, Luca's leaving. And then it'd be funny if Jeremy Grant did that twice, where uh, just gets a massive contract because the franchise he's with is like, well, if we don't pay him, our star guard's gonna leave. And then they give him a million dollars, and the guard is still just like, let me the fuck out of here. Did they pay him last year? Like even by the time they. They paid him. It it was inevitable that Lillard was gone. Yeah. yeah, they just can't read the room. That's the thing. Is like they they were calling Dame and he was being really distant and like cold. But they're like, damn, something's up with him. He's he's weird lately. But this this Jeremy Grant contract I, I will know cheer him up. up. He's worried we're not going to sign Jeremy Grant. We don't even <laughs> need to hear it from him. We'll get, we'll do it. <laughs> yeah, okay. We'll surprise him with it. It'll be really nice. He'll be so happy. We'll throw a little party for him. So, yeah, um, the Mavericks looked into Jeremy Grant. I, I'm higher. I don't know if I'm higher on the Mavericks than most people because I do think the version of Luka we saw in the finals is not representative of how good he actually is. I think – he it was reported he was getting like 
pain injections into shit all over his body before games and stuff. And I hey, just that's don't... that's not a good idea. I would I would get something to take away the pain, not inject more. <laughs> well, he's trying to he's trying to increase his tolerance, and then the pain <laughs> the injected pain dissipates by game time, and so it's just normal pain by that point. He can handle it. Um, yeah. So I think Luca is better. I do think we kind of just saw the reality of the Kyrie experience this postseason. I don't think like he he can get hot. He can have a sick ass series against the Timberwolves where he's hitting like left handed floater bank shots and cooking the shit out of big men in the pick and roll and stuff. But I just don't think I don't I think the days of us getting like four series of 26 points per game on 50, 40, 90 shooting out of Kyrie might be a thing of the past. And I don't know if picking up Jeremy Grant really takes you into like the we're going to give Boston a really tough series type tier. It would have to be Jeremy Grant shot really well from three this past year, right? Was he 40%? On like yeah, he's been above 40. He's been above, let me, let me pull up the volume, but he's been above 40 for the past two years. I know that. If he's, if he's high volume, then that's good. Cause I think they need volume shooters. They do. That's, that's the problem with PJ and Derek Jones Jr. Is okay. Derek Jones Jr. free? He is. Yeah, that's another thing. Is like, I don't. That's going to be hard to recreate. Uh, and well, I, I think Jeremy Grant would could do everything he does and more. Yeah, it just cost three times as much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, this past past two seasons, Jeremy Grant has been forty percent on five point four three point attempts per game. I can't imagine there's a ton of catch and shoot in there. Although I guess he's playing off Simons and everybody, so it's he doesn't have to create absolutely everything. It's not like Kate Cunningham, but uh, I I think I think you could bump that volume up next to Luca and Kyrie. I think he could be taking six or seven three point attempts a game. And what would the cost be? Hardaway and what else? Uh, I I don't have a package put together. They're just also trying to trade Hardaway. Those are separate reports, and so mm. it would make sense if they looked for Grant that Hardaway. I think he's making like eighteen million dollars next year. So like, if he was one of the foundational pieces in the move, they would need to include other shit. But uh, he would be involved, I would assume. Yeah, if if they're able to pull it off, I think that's a good move. Because because. Jeremy Grant can scale his game down and go uh-huh. back to old Jeremy Grant. That could be good. I don't know, man. I just I I guess you do it. You take a big swing while you have Luca on your team and everything. And the cap does go up, so 30 mil isn't what it used to be. But still, I just think 34 million in two years, that's so much money to be given to Jeremy Grant. That's the thing. Kyle, Kyle Kuzma's contract is descending. So the contracts are worth the same amount of money in the same amount of years. But Kuzma made like $35 million last year or something. And by the end of it for the past or for the final, like two or three seasons, he's closer to 20 million. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I'd be fine with either one of those. I I think Grant, I would still say Grant's the better player, Mm -hmm. but, but Kuzma might be more comfortable shooting high volume threes. Yeah, he might be. He's got some experience. I wonder. I wonder if he was shooting in uh, L.A. next to LeBron and everything. He was probably taking like six attempts a game. Was it was his shooting higher than Jason Tatum's on that on that graph? Um. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. His, he got the shooting. Nice. Um. I I think he was he was up and down in L.A. But yeah. So if. KCP leaves the Nuggets and the Nuggets drop below the second apron. They could go after Bogdan Bogdanovich. Woo. Uh, Zeke Naji, Reggie Jackson, and Hunter Tyson and a 2024 first round pick for Bogdan Bogdanovich. If you're happily Atlanta, happily if pulled if you're the trigger. Atlanta, no reason to do that. <laughs> hey, there was a there was a draft express there was a draft express report that Hawks fans on my timeline got really mad at <gasps> that that speculated uh there's a fire sale imminent in Atlanta, um and Jalen Johnson is the only untouchable player and if that's the case um which it seemed 
I don't know. I got a lot of evidence from Atlanta fans that were like, no one said anything about this. They didn't even imply it. This isn't happening. Um, but if it is the case, maybe Bogdanovich is on the move. I wouldn't mind. Him. They're, would... they're run by bozos. Yeah, absolutely. They're fucking stupid. Um, it would be funny for them to blow it up and then take – uh, ceiling Michael Porter Jr. Um, with the first overall pick. It's just like this is a crazy year to blow it up. But maybe you're going back-to-back number one overall and you're getting Cooper Flag next season. Uh, oh, man, what a dream. Yeah, I think I would rather have KCP, but Bogdanovich, it's a fine consolation prize. Like he is really underrated, and I think he could do some of the same stuff. Off- He'd probably do more offensively in terms of, like, on-ball creation and running yeah. a little bit of a two-man game with Jokic or whoever, which that would be nice. And he's a Serb. Yeah, yeah, there you go. A little uh, Balkan solidarity. It would be nice because they don't – even Reggie Jackson, like, anyone can run a two-man game with Jokic. You and I could do it because that's how good he is, but – in terms of like really high level guys, and at me it. on the right day, and lights out shooting. Yeah, there you go. Well, he's a great screen setter, and he'll get you a soft a soft pass right in the bread basket for a catch and shoot look. So, I think Bogdanovich would be cool to use for shit like that in a way that Reggie Jackson he's not that good at that. He's much worse than Bruce Brown was at it. But uh, I would still rather have KCP. It just feels like. The, the defense could slide very rapidly if they lose KCP in the way he like navigates screens and is a go-to on ball guy. They, that was one of the problems. If you, if you don't have a guy who can handle screens uh, the way that KCP does with Jokic, Jokic is going to be exposed a lot more. And so that, that worries me. But if it's a foregone conclusion that he's leaving, Bogdanovich is fine in terms of a return. Zach Levine, he's a he's a backup option for the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, and he might be a king. They might be interested. They had some interest. They signed him to an offer sheet a couple years ago mm-hmm. when he was a restricted free agent. And, and it seems there might still be some interest um, there could be a trade Harrison Barnes and Kevin Herter for him. Oh, I'd be would, okay with that. Would you like that? Yeah, I was going to ask. I'd be okay because they'll be off the books quicker. And Kevin Herter might still be an okay play. And you know Red what? Velvet. Kevin, Kevin Herter can shoot. And so we actually really need shooters for to surround Josh Giddy. So yeah. the guard then of the have, future. Then we have two white players. So that's huge. Uh, actually, wait, three with Vucevic. Who else is there? Um, white have, shooters well who uh, could we do an all white starting lineup probably not um but we would be we'd be huge we'd be huge in certain neighborhoods of chicago um but yeah the kings at this juncture are still considering trade possibilities for their number 13 overall pick in this year's draft as well okay um i think the kings this could be a good. This could be a good uh, segue. Oh well, first of all, okay, the Kings getting Zach Levine. I think they're fine. I think it's like a tangential move. I don't think he really raises the the ceiling. They for them. they definitely be better with him in place of Herder and Harrison Barnes. But yeah, they're not taken to new heights. Yeah. Um. But I was going to say, oh, Kenny Atkinson. Uh, that was the last free agency thing ah. that I wanted to talk about. Before we get I, – I could do like one or two lobbyist requests here. Um, yeah, Kenny Atkinson, the Cavs hired uh, – what is he, a Warriors assistant? Yeah, I think that's where he was. Yeah. Um, the Cavs hired him, and they are Brooklyn confident. Nets legend. Yeah, because um, they – that was one of the factors behind it was that he was pretty close with uh, – Lavert and Jared Allen in Brooklyn as well. <laughs> so they're bringing in like a lot of, a, I don't know, a fair amount of continuity for a brand new head coach. And they are confident oh. in their ability to retain Donovan Mitchell with a four year, $209 million contract. That feels like really good value to me. Yeah. They're so, so they're saved on that front. They have Darius Garland who could get somebody good. There's, there's, I don't know if there's been any talk between teams, but there's been a lot of talk about a Garland for Mikel Bridges trade. I think that'd be mm-hmm. okay. 
Um, but apparently, the I, Shams also said that James Borrego was the front runner for that job mm-hmm. until they brought it to the owner. And he was like, no, you're going to do Kenny Atkinson. Okay. Well, um, that's never gone wrong. Every time the owner, <laughs> every time the owner gets super involved in NBA, uh, it works out really well because, like, the owner's pretty much like a second GM. I don't know if you guys, it's like a little known kind of life hack situation for an NBA franchise. Is uh, you just get like two voices making decisions, recreating and then, one in the aggregate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One really strong one in the mm-hmm. aggregate. And so it uh it clarifies the future of the team and the vision that you're building. Uh it, it lets everybody know that, you know, if you need somebody to answer to, there's actually two of us. And so mm-hmm. like that doesn't it it doesn't confuse people. It puts them more at ease because if one of if somebody's busy, you can just call the other one and you'll get the exact same answer and everything. So yeah, that's good. I'm happy that the Cavs did that. I think Kenny Atkinson. He's probably fine. I'm not really that locked into like assistance on other benches, but uh, he's a name that I've heard thrown a lot around in a number of coaching possibilities. And then I know Borrego is now prominently involved in the Detroit Pistons head coaching search. Mm, that what a what a rough life. <laughs> Charlotte and then Detroit. Um, the the last two rapid fire free agency things. Brooke Lopez apparently could be traded, which seems kind of weird, but the Rockets may be interested. And then Walker Kessler has been in some rumors. I got to say, they're saying it's because there's a coaching issue. Like he, him and Will Hardy, I think might not get along. Uh Um, But I got to say, not, not the best sign for Walker Kessler. If a team is, would be willing to trade him because why trade a player like that? Yeah. Like young and one statistically one of the best room protect- protectors in the league is rookie year. Like you shouldn't, that's the kind of guy I think you would side with over a coach, mm-hmm. especially a fraudulent coach that took so long to give ice price minutes and still misused him. How is, uh, how is he employed? You know? Yeah. And he should be, how is he living? Some how are is saying, he alive. Not, how is he breathing? Me. This is a joke. This is satire. Um, Salt Lake, you know, you know what to do. This is a joke. This is a joke. This is satire. Um, we're about to drink some coffee. Nah, nah. That's how you know it's a joke. <laughs> I would never do that. Um, all right, lobbyist requests. Dear and Fox Mulder. Well, what time is it? First of all, one oh seven. All right. Uh, Mulder, Mister Mulder wants to know lobbyist request for Paul George to the Kings, trying to speak it into oh. existence. I guess that's not completely out of like the realm of possibility but that's why i mentioned you got malik monk for 19 million dollars be happy with that man i don't think you're getting paul george well harrison barnes can go to the clippers and do the dirty work hey that's true there you go um maybe they can put together they re-sign tobias harris they get him back is harris a free agent this year yeah because he was expiring so they sign Tobias Harris, and I think they, they get... genuinely do have interest. Well, he doesn't do anything, so I don't know why. But if you could get him and Harrison Barnes <laughs> on the same team, what he did when he was a Clipper? So no, he it's, didn't. He it's was, Clipper it's, magic. It's the fakest fucking. I don't know. It's just one of those guys that like NBA pundits would be like, "This guy's nearly an All Star every year, and his team is winning like." 38 games and he's averaging 18 points i on. think he was an efficient 20 points that that year oh but my god <laughs> oh my oh brother you got a tobias defender in my mentions. this is embarrassing the le- they took a game off the greatest team in history that doesn't happen that was because that was because of danilo gallinari if i had to wager <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so paul george to the kings fuck it uh i I I would like it more than probably like the Knicks, I guess. Um, but I still don't. That doesn't change your life if you're a Kings fan. Like you're still looking to maybe make the conference finals. Uh, Keegan Murray and Paul George are the new Kawhi and Paul George. Oh, <laughs> it didn't work out with this guy who's way better. So we're going to try with this 24-year-old instead. Sweet. Uh, and then... Hmm, I have three left. You can pick one through three, and I'll read that one. Number three, of course. 
Okay, number three. Uh, I'd love to hear what you guys think Detroit is going to do. And that's from Cade Sisk. Sorry. I don't know what they're going to do. <laughs> I think apparently Matas Buzelis is locked in it at number five for them. Okay. So I think that'd be it. That, that's a fine pick. It's a whatever pick. Your your destiny is not changed. Um, but fine, well, things can only go up firing Monty Williams. And, and Jaden Ivey, he's probably at church right now, but hopefully he also goes to the gym. So just just – fresh reset next year maybe things can can look up i don't know i don't know what they're gonna do in free agency i don't know what options they have um they're gonna sign clay thompson that'd be epic they're gonna sign clay they're not gonna play killian hayes monty williams is not well, gonna he's gone now. <laughs> i know well that's why they're not gonna do it Jeez. <laughs> and so they're not gonna do that monty williams is not gonna terrorize the roster there's a lot of changes that you could like just look at and be like huh i think that's a net positive heading into next year. It's hard. It's, it's going to be hard to win 14 games next oh. season. I think, I think Cade can get you to 25 wins next year. That's, that would be an impressive season from Mr. Cunningham and the Detroit Pistons. But overall, I don't think, I think they're probably, yeah. I mean, Matas, I guess at five, I think they're probably just going to focus on the guys they have. And, uh, try to be as good as possible next year year seven of the rebuild i believe nasty business well it the clock starts ticking once you get Cade. so so it's really year that? four 2021 yeah really year four so if Cade is bad you're screwed but if Cade is good things might be looking up it's funny to like use bullshit reasoning to cut the rebuild time in half and still be like oh the clock's ticking. Like this is this is not. It's not like we're brand new here. You know, people have turned it around faster than this. If you ever feel bad, Pistons fans, just think, well, my team is trying to build around Cade Cunningham and not Josh Giddy. Yeah, your team could be building around. Your team could be figuring out the Miles Bridges situation. You know, there are a lot oh of choppier God. waters to navigate than uh than the Cade Cunningham. Uh, Jade and Ivy on ball balance. Imagine paying that guy thirty million dollars a year. He's not even that good anymore. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, do you have any final thoughts for the people? I don't think I do. Uh, I know somebody who has a little ditty. He wants to. S- nah, can we say that anymore? No, we that's... can't say. Uh, did he ruined all ditties? Did he ruined all ditties? Giddy ruined all Chicago Bulls. And Pau Gasol. We don't, oh, we don't me, know how it. to. We don't know. Uh, yeah, I got a good one. We don't know how to save the Pistons, but Pau Gasol knows how to save a life. Take it away, Pau. Take it away, Pau. Lay down a list of what.